Hello. Look at that bucket. Oh, what is in that bucket? <laughs> is it milk? What you can see there under the microscope are living sperm. And, and the sperm belong to one of you blokes. Why is there so many? When a man produces sperm, he produces something like a hundred million sperm. <laughs> so that would be capable of fertilizing more than all the women in the United Kingdom at the same time. Isn't that extraordinary? Now, Danielle, when, how many eggs do you produce in a month? Uh, I don't count them. Four? Um, oh? <laughs> I don't no, count. it's like, it's like one, ain't it? One. One. So let's have a look under the microscope under a slightly higher power. Do you notice something about the sperm? Jake, are all the sperm the same? No. No. Yeah? yeah. What's, what's different about them? Some of them are bigger, like this size. That may, be, that may be a trick of the microscope. One of them's like white, maybe. Anything else? Anybody else notice something different? Angelique? Some of them are swimming really, really fast, yeah? Uh, that's good. Some of them, Some look of them are moving good. fast. Yeah. Some of them are stronger than And they're all going different ways. One of them has died. Well, can, come and show me which one's died. The one there, look there. Come on, come up to the screen and point it out. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. What, what you're seeing is something which is really important about, about human biology. All of us, all males, produce a large number of sperm, but some of the sperm are abnormal, and some of them will be dead and not swimming. And as, as you rightly point out, that sperm there is not swimming. And what we can see, if we try and get um, the microscope up, let's... Let's bring Dr. Lindsay in, because Lindsay, Dr. Lindsay is a real sperm expert, and he's standing in the corner there. That's a very abnormal-looking sperm to me. Tell, me. tell me about it. It is, yes, you can see here. If you look at a... See if we can find something that looks a bit more normal as we go along. It's a sort of slightly oval shape, and that's designed to help it swim. If you look at uh, where the, the shape of the head is abnormal, there are two problems with it. Firstly, it's much more difficult for it to swim. Just the hydrodynamics of it, the physics, is much more problematic. And secondly, there's the question of how it delivers that important genetic message that it carries to the egg. What's that? What is that? It looks like a flower. Yeah, come, yeah. Come and show me what you're looking at. This one. And the one next to it. Essentially, this one hasn't formed. What's this one? Yeah, that one and this one, what is it? Yeah. What the, 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 these haven't formed properly. It's, just, it's a very complicated manufacturing process, and the manufacturing process has gone wrong <laughs> in development. It's a is bit, that how a bit like duff come about? <laughs> no, not necessarily. It's much more likely. You need to distinguish what the sperm does in terms of it delivering a message and the message that it delivers. Some abnormal sperm can deliver an abnormal message, but they're selected against. So well, because, I've, because they're abnormal, they don't swim well, as well. So how come, yeah, there's so many, yeah, but either one or two make it? How does that happen? Why? No, well, but if you get twins, that's, is that two yeah. sperm? It's two eggs. Two eggs. Two, two eggs. Two eggs. Unless it's identical twins. Yeah. Well, we'll, come, well, we'll come to twinning later on because it's complicated. Guys, what, I want, what I'd like to do is to, is to take one sperm that isn't swimming much so we can actually look at its, look at its structure. It's got a head. And then it's got what we call a mid-piece here, which you can see. And then it's got this very long, wicky tail. This one isn't moving much. And, the, and what does the head contain? That carries the genetic messages. And what are the genetic messages on? DNA. Yes, they're in the DNA, and they're Jesus. on what? Um, well, you're doing, you're doing really well. But can somebody tell me what's inside the head of the sperm? Have you heard of chromosomes? Yeah, all the chromosomes which produce the genetic messages which, um, which you're talking about are in that head of the sperm. And the motor, the engine, which drives the sperm swimming forward, is really effectively in that mid-piece. Absolutely. And what is interesting is what we can't easily show on this microscope, because it's not really quite um, set up well enough, is that when the sperm swim towards the egg, they undergo a change 
on the front of the sperm. There's a, there's a cap, actually, which we can't see. Uh, and uh, that's well so shown there. Do you see that cap? That's called the acrosome, OK? Uh, the technical name doesn't actually matter, but that is important uh, because it's unique to the species. So that's why a bull sperm couldn't fertilize a human being, and a monkey sperm can't fertilize, um, let's say, a gorilla couldn't fertilise a chimpanzee. See, like, when a dog has a, um, a, dog has a little puppies, yeah, you've got, like, the, you got the, the runt. Yeah. And you've got, like, a dominant... Do you get dominant sperm and, like, the runt... Well, sort of... the, the, that's a really interesting question, actually, Colin. We, we don't know. I mean, there's a lot of debate about that, isn't there, Kevin? There's a, there's, a, there's a notion that there's competition between sperm. It's certainly, in birds that produce sperm, it seems that the sperm do compete to get to the egg. What we do know is that the sperm have a chemical process by which they can identify where the egg is and swim towards it. It's like smelling the egg. The egg, the egg releases something which is akin, akin to a smell, chemicals, and the sperm can find that and they track their way. Now, at the moment, these sperm are moving relatively randomly. What we can say is that, you know, this is, this is a highly fertile specimen. Yeah. It's a bucket full of... That could be a horse. Right, we're going to start with the bull. Right, I'm going to start pouring sperm into this beaker, and I want you to tell me... That... Spill it! Spill it! I want you to tell me what you guess as the amount of sperm that a bull would produce. Shout stop when you think I've got enough sperm in the bottle to represent a bull. Are you really seriously thinking I produce that much? No, no, it's about this much. When a bull ejaculates... That's a bull. Do you think a whale produces more sperm or less sperm? How much more? Whale. What about a ram? The ram is one of the most sexually active of... That's a ram, it's tiny. That's about actually the same as a human. But, it's, but in fact, it's a ram, OK? So that's a ram sperm. And then we've got... What about an Asian elephant? That's an Asian elephant sperm. That's quite a lot though, And now we're going to have a horse. No. What animal did we dissect last week? We dissected a pig. Isn't that amazing? That's just one ejaculate from a pig. There's roughly speaking about a billion sperm in that, in that beaker. How many baby pigs would there be in the litter? One. No. No. Yeah, maybe, maybe at the most a dozen. So, so all those sperm to produce just a few. Yeah, Craig, do you think we should try our experiment? We're going to do something which is really quite difficult. We're going to try and fertilise an egg with sperm, and we're going to watch the beginning of life after fertilisation. We're going to watch the egg. I hope. Divide. Now that's the hope. This may not work, but the creature we're going to use is a creature that was first used in about 18, 1880, 1890, about 100, just over 100 years ago. A man called Boveri in Naples took sea urchins from the Bay of Naples. Now they're very, very prickly. So you've got to handle them extremely carefully, all right? You just suck off my hand or anything. I'm serious. I'm serious. You, if we let you handle these, you've got to promise me that you'll that you'll be really careful. The sea urchin doesn't get pregnant. The sea urchin produces its sperm and it produces its eggs into the seawater. 
The sperm then find the eggs by a process of smelling, all right, by this chemical process. So one of the reasons why you need to have a vast number of sperm is because the sea is large, okay, and the sperm have to find the eggs. Now, in a laboratory, we can get the sea urchins to produce their eggs or sperm, and then we can mix them up in a dish, and hopefully under the microscope, watch the process. To produce a little baby sea urchin, which we can see under the microscope, will take about 24 hours. So you're coming back to see me tomorrow, and if we can get the experiment to work, then we can look at the result of this experiment tomorrow when we do the next lesson, if you agree. You can pick it up. It's a live sea urchin. They breathe yeah. like on top of yeah. it. It's like heavy. Oh. 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 It doesn't have eyes. Um, it doesn't have really much of a nervous system. It's very, very simple. No brain. What's eyes? Uh, a, a, a few very simple nerves. If you come round, if you gather around the desk here, you'll see that the tentacle's moving. Where? Well, they won't move out. Thank you very much indeed. Well done. What is that? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's that? I'm the big sperm, but I don't know which. Are you playing games? No. It just spiked to my hand. <laughs> <laughs> the sea urchin. Actually, let me see. Apparently, that's seawater. Yeah, that's what he told me. That's what. It's seawater. That's it. You're it's it's touching my hand. It's it's you'll, you'll become a biologist when you've done that. You're a scientist. I thought it was really sperm. <laughs> Craig is going to hand round some dishes with sea urchins in so you can get friendly with your sea urchin. Uh, All right. And handle it very, very gently. Don't shake it. Uh, all right, we'll put it there. Where's his mouth? Where? No, don't, because it might bite me. It won't bite me. It sucks. Man, it sucks. I don't want that on my hand if it sucks on my hand. <laughs> Come on. I've got a machine. Pay attention. Pick your sea urchin up. Turn it upside down and look at the underneath. What do you see underneath the sea urchin? It's a mouth. It's a mouth, yeah. It looks a bit like a starfish family. Mm. It's exact. It's the same family. Well done. Well done. It is actually a starfish, and it, in fact, is constructed in five stars. But it's, um, but it's full... full they, this species forms a ball, but it's, a, it's the same family. It's exactly the same family. George Elder said something very important and very interesting. He said it looks a bit like a starfish, and he's quite right, because, actually, this is... This is a member of the starfish family. But the starfish has folded its star limbs around in a ball to produce a ball. OK, you've all seen the pore underneath, OK? Now, that's where the egg or sperm are going to come from. What you've got in your kit is what all scientists use. A Petri dish, OK? And so many lives have begun in a Petri dish. In vitro fertilisation. We're going to persuade the sea urchin to give up some sperm and its eggs. Inside the sea urchin, there's more <coughs> testis or ovary than any other organ. You remember, what was the biggest organ in the, in the rat we saw last week? Kidney. No, it wasn't the kidney. What? Liver. No, the liver, Jordel. It was the liver. Right. But in the sea urchin, the biggest organ, the biggest organs are the reproductive organs, the organs that make other sea urchins. Right, pay attention. We're now going to get the egg or sperm out of the sea urchin. And the trick is very simple. You hold your sea urchin up like this, and you hold your... One of you hold the Petri dish, and then if you take your sea urchin, if you shake it really vigorously, it should think that it's like this. It should think that it's going to produce its sperm. I don't know if this is going to work. Come on. Shake it up, upside down, and then, and then once you've done that, once you've shaken it, put it on top of your Petri dish and leave it on the bench. Right now, already, my sea urchin is starting to produce either sperm or egg, 
but I don't know which is which because I haven't looked down the microscope. So there. You're not very vigorous, you lot, are you? I don't want to kill it. No, you won't kill it. You won't kill it. It loves it. Who's got some fluid out of their, out of their sea urchin? Jordel? Mine is not coming. Is it not? I can't hold all the time to get on. Did it sprout? Where's my lizard? Where's it's my thing? It's not a sprout. Where's my urchin? Danielle, did yours come? Is that it? Is that come? Craig? Yeah, hang on. Craig? Is this the, is this the come? <laughs> what is this? It's almost like a spunk. Mine got bent. OK. Right, so what you can see here. What are these objects under the microscope, do you think? These are from our sea urchins, from one of the sea urchins, one of your sea urchins. What do you think these round objects are on the screen that aren't moving? Anybody? These are not sperm, so what are they? Eggs. They're eggs. Look at them. The eggs are still, they're round, and they're waiting to be fertilised. Look on the screen a second, look. What the, what the hell is that? Look at this. Oh, my face, look at that. Oh, my face, what's that? Oh, my God, that's so What's that? Big slug? What's that? Is that one? I know, what's that? It's a silk. That's yours? It's moving. That, is that the sperm? No, it's not. It's quite beautiful, isn't it? If you look very carefully, you can see that it's propelling itself with hair-like cells or hair-like structures at the back, OK? Now, this, isn't, this shouldn't be in the solution, but because we're using natural water, this is a microorganism. It's, in fact, a what's called a paramecium. So this is a single-celled living creature, and it's nothing whatsoever to do with the in vitro fertilisation. All the cells you can see around it are eggs. It's not a sperm, but it's found itself into the seawater or into the, water, the, sa the salt water we're using. Take it out, then. Well, I can't take it out. It's too... It's very high-power magnification. Why aren't they working? They are. We went round to people during the break. And we got some. You got some off me. Why is the what? Oh, my God, I got it! That's for feeding. Look, there! That's for feeding and also for... For producing its sperm and eggs. It, take it quick. I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like a little bit of squat. It looked like a clown. It looked like a clown. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yes. Yes, I made a sea urchin come. Aha. Was that Angelique? Yes, it is. Angelique, you saved the day. Well done. Amazing. We've got some sperm here. Have we? Yeah. Got some sperm. I can't see anything, sir. They're very small, aren't they? There's a the sperm. Oh my god, there's the sperm! There's the sperm! Alright, so what we're gonna do. Oh my there's god! Sperm, see? There's the sperm! Well done, you. OK, so we've got some sperm. What have we got to do? So, if you get me a pipette out of that drawer. Pipette. Is this a pipette? Oh, yeah. no, pipette is this one. That's right, exactly. So what we're going to do is to pick up the sperm. OK. There they are, in there, all right, because we know the sperm in there. OK. And we're going to put them on a slide where I've got some eggs. Oh, is right. that the eggs? Yeah. 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 So what we're going to do now? Where's the sperm? Well, there's the eggs, and the sperm is being passed. Why is the sperm passed? Well, they won't all come in together. Oh, I'm being 
patiently. We've got some eggs in there. So what they might do, that was the net we used, wasn't it? I think so. Mix it up. Okay. Just take it there, put the pipette, and mix it up. That's it. Right, guys, what, what Angelique is doing is mixing up the egg and the sperm that we've got out of some of the sea urchins. Okay, so here we've got the mixture of the egg and sperm. I okay. Sit on that or something. And we're just going to leave it in the dish with a cover on, and we'll wait for fertilization to happen. And then later on, we'll come back and we'll look to see whether or not we've got sea urchins starting life. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I got a farm. She got some sperm. Oh, <laughs>